This is the Bringing Business to Retail podcast with today's guest, Lee Rowley, who's going to help you understand the art of copy branding. Welcome to the Bringing Business to Retail podcast on selenanight.com. Stay ahead of the competition by opening your doors to business experts so you can learn, grow, and be inspired. Passionate about bringing business strategies to independent retailers, please welcome your host, Selena Knight. Hey there, and welcome to today's episode of the Bringing Business to Retail podcast. I have just arrived back in Australia from my 10 or so days in the US attending the Traffic and Conversion Conference. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, it is one of the biggest digital marketing conferences in the world. In fact, there are around 7,000 people attending, six stages, I think there are about 12 sessions per day, can get a little overwhelming. So if you are going to a big conference like that, let me just jump in with my first hack. This is what I learned from the first time I went to the big conference and then the second time I went to a big conference was the first time I just ping ponged between sessions. I wanted to learn as much as possible. And as a result, I came home with not one, but two notebooks full of notes. And I took very little action because there were so many things that I wanted to implement. This time around, I approached it with a very different strategy. And that was quite simply, I sat down with my team and we talked about what we were going to focus on in the business in the next 12 months. And we picked a few things. One was optimizing our funnels. Two was getting really clear on our copywriting and branding. You gotta do that every couple of years because your audience changes. And three, quite personally, I wanted to know what was happening in the world of e-commerce and paid marketing. So things like Facebook ads, Google ads, Instagram ads, all those kinds of things. So I only chose the sessions that were going to help me focus on those three things. And as a result, my whole experience was so much calmer. There was no dashing around from session to session in case I might miss something. Occasionally, I just didn't go to a session, which was quite nice because there's no lunchtime break. There's, there's not much time in between the sessions because the hotel is so big, you have to take that time to get from one side to the other. In fact, if you were following me on Facebook, I actually did a Facebook Live walking from one side to the other where we went through the great big, the, the main stage. We went through there. I think it seats about 4,000 people, but I did a little tour through there and it took about five or six minutes just to go through that main stage area. A little fun thing, a little behind the scenes. If you want to head over to Facebook and check it out. But as a result of being really focused on what I wanted to take away, I met with my two friends, the gorgeous Gina Onativia, who has been on the podcast, and the amazing copywriter, Megan O'Leary. So the next day after the conference finished, we actually met for brunch and we talked about what we wanted to implement in our businesses first. And then we worked on a strategy. So each person had around half an hour and we sat down and helped each person hone the thing that they needed to implement in the next couple of weeks. And as a result, I've come home with an exact strategy of what I want to do in the next 30 days. Just, you know, so you can go away and feel like you've implemented something. You can go away and feel like it was all worth its while. And already I've only been home for two days now, but already we've implemented three of the things that we talked about. And I feel like a great big weight has been lifted on my, off my shoulders because you, you come away with the best intentions, but you get back to work and there's this to-do list, especially when you've been gone for quite some time, this great big to-do list. But on Monday, when I arrived home, I met with my team. We went through the things that I wanted to implement. We divided the tasks up and a couple of days later, they've, they're already in place. And now we can move on to the next thing. Now, whether you have a team or not, what I want you to take away from this is just chunking things up and getting really, really focused on what you want to achieve is going to make crossing things off your to-do list and make and just making you feel like you've got a handle on all the things, which I know can be really difficult sometimes. That is the key. Pick a thing, focus on it and implement it. The fact is we are all going to make mistakes. The fact is we're going to do things 
and not get the results that we thought that we get or we're not going to get the results that other people get. It is all about listening to the information, processing it and seeing how it's going to work for your audience. Now, speaking of mistakes, today's guest, Lee Rowley, is a veteran sales copywriter and he's made a lot of mistakes and he is the first one to admit it. What he has worked out is that marketing is different for everybody. What channel might work for some people may not work for others, but there is one thing that is always going to work and that is to develop a connection, a really personal approach when it comes to marketing your brand. And today he's gonna share with us exactly how you can do that to boost sales. Now, if you want some more help on how you can boost sales, that's just one of the areas that I focus on when I work with clients in both my one-on-one programs and in my group coaching programs and even in my online courses. Money is the first thing that we like to jump into because making money makes your life a whole bunch easier. If you want to see how you can work with me, head on over to selinanight.com forward slash coaching and have a browse around. And if it's something that you want to do, fill in the application form and we can chat more. But let's talk more about building your brand to sell more products with Lee Rowley. Hey there, and welcome to this week's episode of the Bringing Business to Retail podcast. If you have ever wondered how to match your copywriting with your branding and make sure that it all flows so that you can make more money, get more customers and keep those customers hanging around, you're going to love today's episode. Now, Lee Rowley is a 10-year veteran sales copywriter, but for the first six or so of those years, he was pretty bad at his job. (laughs) Then he stopped listening to all the copywriting experts and how they said that copywriting and marketing had to be done. And instead, he spent 18 months developing a connection-forging personal approach to brand marketing that nearly doubled his clients' conversions and revenues. And that is what he's going to share with us today. So welcome to the show, Lee. I am super excited because I love copywriting, I love branding, and I love making more money. So those are three of my favorite things. Those are three of my favorite things too. (laughs) Perfect. How about that, Selena? Yeah. Well, thank you very much for having me on the show. We appreciate it. No problems. Tell us why you were so crappy at your job for six years. And if you were so bad at it, why did you stick it out? Oh, well, Wow. So there's some big questions here. So I started out learning copy, uh, how to how to write copy for my clients the same way everybody else does. They're like, okay, uh, hand copy the Dan Kennedy letters, hand copy the Gary Halbert letters, use these templates, do things exactly the way they do. And, you know, it always felt really uncomfortable because it's like, okay, 30, 40 years ago, there wasn't that much going on. You could actually focus on an eight page sales letter. Yeah. You know, today things are different. Not that the fundamentals aren't to say the fundamentals are still solid. They carry over, but how we do it today has to be different. It has to be more customer focused and it's about getting into their world. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, it, it, I didn't re- it took me a long time to really just break away from that because I got into this cycle of I can only charge so much because I look like everybody else. So I had to write copy faster. So I had to use templates. So, you know, I never yeah. got anywhere. It was this constant cycle of not making enough money and doing too much work. So I finally just kind of hit this breaking point where I'm just like, okay, if I'm going to continue doing this, you know, I, I want to do it in a way that's authentic, in a way that doesn't make me feel like I need a shower afterwards or that I need, I don't feel like I need a hazmat suit to, to sit at the keyboard. Yeah. You know, and so what I, I, I tried a lot of different approaches and didn't, you know, I had a lot of failures, uh, which are great things because they're learning experiences. And I finally developed a system called Avatar Immersion. And, you know, what that really centers around is doing research on your audience, whoever they are, Mm -hmm. uh, whoever's buying your products and seeing what they say. So if you go into a Facebook group, for example, uh, I had a client who uh, was targeting people with rheumatoid arthritis. Yep. Uh, So I subscribed to half a dozen Facebook groups and you know, what I heard didn't heard the, what I heard them take talking about wasn't so much uh, the pain, uh, the aches, the limited mobility. It was like the, the, deeper sub-level stuff like I can't sleep at night and for an extension by that I can't sleep in the same bed as my spouse anymore 
Mm. because I'm tossing and turning all night. So our relationship is starting to become strained because of the rheumatoid arthritis. Mm. What, you know, what marketer thinks of that? You know, if they go for the surface stuff, they go, oh, okay, the aches and pains and stuff like that. But all these little details, if you can show them that you understand their day-to-day -day lives, then, sa then selling doesn't really become a hard thing, regardless of whether it's online or offline. Yeah. I recently was helping a co uh, one of my clients write some copy um, for her packaging. So she was selling a um, sports nutrition product. And so what we did was we literally did exactly what you said. We went into a bunch of forums. We went to a bunch of competitor sites and we read all of the reviews. And what we discovered was for this particular product, it was all about the taste. Everybody was saying, oh, it's a great product, but it tastes very chalky or it's a great yeah. product, but it tastes really bitter. And hers tastes amazing because it's got cranberry in it. Oh. And so that was the key thing that we focused on was the nice. fact that it tasted really good because every single review that we could read on everybody else's site was all about the taste. So the information is out there if you're prepared to go and look for it. That's absolutely fantastic because if you hadn't have taken the time to do that, then you probably would have focused on the same pain points that all of your competitors are. Yeah, the actual know? nutritional and, benefits of it. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's like they don't need one more person telling them that they need vitamin one, you know, more vitamin yeah. X in this diet in their diet. You know, you you um, you hit a great thing. Uh, I I did a page once for uh, a, a company selling apple cider vinegar supplements, little capsules. Yep. And of course, there's a blue million of those on on Amazon, right? And they're all pretty much the same thing. So I'm like, okay, well, what are we going to do to differentiate? And I'm like. Let me think about this. So I got, I climbed up in my cabinet, got in the back of the cabinet and got a dusty old bottle of apple cider vinegar, unscrewed the cabinet in front of my, with my wife looking at me going, what are you doing? I just took a huge swig of it. Oh, it, it tasted like crying. Yeah. It tasted, and it, it tasted would have like burnt your throat as well. <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. And man, that hurt. It was the dumbest thing I ever did. But I, you know, then I had an angle and I went back and we did this guy's uh, sales copy and just crushed it. Yeah, you know, because we focused on that aspect of it that nobody else is paying any attention to. Okay, so before we get into the avatar immersion, tell us why mm -hmm. did you stick it out for six years if you really didn't like doing it and you felt really slimy in the process? <sighs> okay, well, I'm going to be totally transparent here, and this is you know, not entirely business related. Uh, I had a daughter uh, who uh, had a rare genetic illness and we had a lot of, uh, she had a lot of health issues. Uh, and I left my corporate job to start copywriting just because it was a way for me to be home with her. Right. Uh, she passed away about the time that, you know, I kind of had this little crack. Uh, she was 10 at the time. And, uh, you know, after a fairly extensive stint through alcoholism, I finally, that's what kind of brought me to this, like, okay, what can I take away from this? Apparently I can't drink myself to death, so I need to do something positive. So I looked at her life and how she always wanted people to shine authentically, to be their own people, to stand out. It was like she loved you no matter what. Mm -hmm. uh, and she just never judged. And I said, well, what if I could help people shine? What if I could help them not be templated, not be like everybody else, but to bring their own authentic brilliance to the table? through the words that I write and that I help them write. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, uh, that's the honest answer to, to the question. Um, you know, it was, uh, I just kind of had a breaking point there uh, when we lost her and I just, I decided that if I was going to keep doing this, it was going to need to be meaningful. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I can't imagine the pain. My daughter's 10 actually right now. Oh. So um, currently sitting in her bedroom, you know, like a teenager, sulky teenager, because she can't have what she wants for breakfast. So sure. I, you know, I can't even imagine what you must have gone through. But this, I mean, I guess you took something which was just life changing and you used it to change your life. And now you're using that to change other people's lives. So how did you, like, how did you come up with this avatar immersion theory? Theory. Formula? No theory, you didn't practice, so it has to be. <laughs> well, God, I don't care. You, we can go with whatever, whatever you like. Um, it just, I noticed uh, that, you know, when I was looking, because I was in, involved in some coaching groups, because I also do what I call collaborative coaching, which is I teach people how to write their own copy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was in a bunch of coaching groups at the time, and I started looking at the things they were saying and noticed that 
my own marketing started evolving as I was noticing the things that were really going on in their lives. And I, it was just sort of started testing it with, well, what if that's true in other niches as too, as well? Yeah. Um, so I got a couple of my clients to, to let me try it. And I'm just like, hey, I'm going to go out on a limb here and, and try something weird. And if it doesn't work, we're out a week or so of our time. And I say, yeah, okay, go ahead. Um, Good so clients. I go, yeah, I think yeah, I'm, I'm one of those clients. I'm like, just give it a go. <laughs> yeah. And so it's, it's nice to have that level of trust, you know? Yeah. Uh, so then we started getting some really good results. Like I had, uh, you know, just got a text the other day from one of my, one of my biggest clients and he says, um, you know, since we really, since we redid my website copy to be customer focused and to take me out as the hero so much, yeah, I've got a 40% increase in discovery call bookings. Wow. So 40%. And this is in two weeks. So uh, you know, I, I'm really tickled with that, and I'm I'm loving to see these theories actually. You know, find out, oh, yeah, I was right. You know? <laughs> Case study. <laughs> right, exactly. So, do you think that you were talking about? You've been in the industry for quite some time now. So, do you think that the, I guess, the proliferation of social media now? Like, I've, I've been in this business for over a decade, and social media mm-hmm. was only, you know, emerging when like Facebook, Instagram didn't exist when I started out. And now you have a gazillion different platforms and everybody is 100% connected 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that is one of the key reasons that the whole, not the concept, but the whole way that we structure our marketing has had to change? Absolutely. We've, we've learned to get all of our information in bite-sized chunks. And, you know, I mean, that affects everything about your marketing. You know, and not even the not even the length of you know if you want to write if you need a thousand words to say something, then say it, but break it into 150 word chunks with strong subheadlines that tell a story, so mm-hmm. that when so that they can get the gist as they're flipping through and going okay 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 well you know and then they get to the bottom and go if if your subheads have made a story, then they go okay I want to go find out no more more now so yeah. that's what I found through the heat mapping that I've been uh, been doing. Yeah, uh, and for you know retail, if you're not familiar with heat mapping, mm-hmm. essentially what that is is software that tracks what visitors do physically on your site. In other words, where their mouse is pointing and what they're looking at, so that you can figure out key areas to put you know buttons and key text and things like that. Yeah, we have. Uh, I don't know if the episode's gone live yet, but one of our guests was telling us about this fantastic thing. I'm pretty sure it was called Google A/B testing, and what you can do is Google will make a, a skin of a page for you and you can tweak it so you don't have to be a coder or anything like that it's oh, like nice. a drag and drop i know and it's all free and you can do some like a b testing on where your buttons go on the you know on the home page and things like that i haven't tried it out yet but i was just talking to a client about it i was like we need to try this i think it sounds awesome yeah it does <laughs> okay but that's not your forte your forte is we're calling it copy branding right mm-hmm. kind of branding with copywriting so Tell us a little bit more about how we dive into this avatar immersion and how do we bring that into our own branding and copywriting and make money in the process. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the first step for my clients is to just get absolutely clear on their story, on their why. Yeah. Um, And you know, know, if you don't know why you're doing it, because like, I heard somebody saying earlier today on a podcast that like, you know, I can go to Amazon and buy tennis shoes because I don't feel connected to, uh, you know, to, to, to the guy down the street selling the, the same tennis shoes. Um, I can't believe I've forgotten where they came from that quickly, but it, you know, <laughs> anyway, but the concept was, is just, you know, if you don't make a connection, they'll just go buy it anywhere. And the worst thing you want to do is be a commodity. I mean, and that's what I was. The template copywriter was a commodity. Uh, you know, it, it's, the only thing you can do is compete on price and that stinks. Yeah. You've got to have a lot of volume to compete on price mm-hmm. and a big marketing budget. But I have seen people stand out in just crazy markets uh, that you wouldn't even think that you could really bring branding into, you know, like, you know, uh, you know, home remodeling, uh, you know, gutter cleaning, things like that. I mean, I'm doing a whole people had a whole slew of people in the, in the home improvement and renovation niche for a while. Uh, th- we were bringing branding into their sites and teaching them that, like, look, you can separate just bringing by bringing your story to the table. Have you seen Lemonade Insurance? 
Yep. Yeah, they do yeah. a fantastic job, I think, For of sure. bringing their their whole why and their branding into yeah. what is really a very boring topic, insurance. Exactly, exactly. So I, once our clients get get the why down, then we move on to your customer story, which is the avatar version, is, is, is going into the Facebook groups and the YouTube comments and the Amazon reviews and just compiling uh, eight facets of understanding, eight facets of connection, which are just basically just different buckets that you can pull from when you're writing your own uh, about me page or a website homepage or any kind of copy to promote your business online or offline. It can be brochures. You can still pull from those little details like you and I were talking about earlier. Yeah. So let me ask you about the, like the, in, you're talking about creating their own story. What happens if you've been in business? This happened to someone the other day and I wasn't, I was only about 90% sure of the answer. So being in business <laughs> for quite a long time and mm -hmm. obviously when they started out, their business was very different to what the business is now. And so when they started out, their business was all about, you know, there was nothing in the market that had that, you know, they were one of the first people to the market that did this thing. Oh, okay. But now whilst they're a leader in their field, there's loads of people. So the story's kind of changed a little bit. Well, changed mm -hmm. a lot. You know, the, the whole market has changed. The demographic has changed. So which part of the story do you dwell on? Like which part do you actually pull the relevant stuff from? I would pull from the transformation from where they were when they started to where they are now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, I think that story has, has a connection in there, uh, you know, to how, you know, the environment, the business environment around him and, and, you know, the entire, you know, environment in total has changed uh, and what they've done, what they've become to evolve with that. Whew. Okay, good. That's what we did. <laughs> we just kind of, we just said, we just mentioned the first bit and then we focused on where they're on now. So, Whew. Okay. I don't have my sound effects uh, set up where I give you a hallelujah. So. Okay, great. All right. So, for retailers who have been in business and they're thinking, okay, I know my story and let's be honest, a lot of the story is going to be, I really love this product, saw a niche in the market, nobody was really selling it or nobody designed it or there was nobody in my area selling it. So I opened my store, I opened my e-commerce site and here I am. How do you differ Like say you own something like a fashion brand. How do you differentiate yourself from the gazillion other e-commerce and Amazon out there who are all selling the same thing, but you want the sales. Like you want to be like, what, what connection can you make if you're an independent fashion boutique, let's say purely online so that you don't even have a physical store where people can interact. How mm. do you, what, how, what do you draw on? Where do you get that story from? Well, you know, it, it's, you picked if you fish a, a fashion boutique, you, you, you didn't choose to be a professional boxer. You didn't choose to be a skydiver. You didn't choose to be a, an attorney or a doctor or anything. You chose that out of a million things. And there is a story of that. And, and it's a matter of sometimes of digging a little bit deeper and just, I do, I'm a big fan of journaling, really. Mm -hmm. uh, and I spent a long time on that why, uh, which yeah. You know, kind of brought me to the story I was telling you. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was, you know, I, and it, you got to make sales now, but keep in mind that was a several year process to really just get in that story. Uh, but the closer you come to it, the faster it comes. That mm -hmm. I've found, you know, at least that's about the way that I've found it for me. But unless you are just in business solely for the money, in which case I really don't want to, I'm not talking to you. Yeah. Uh, you, know, it, you know, there's, there's a deeper story in there and it takes a lot of work to find it, but it is worth it because then nobody can be you. Yes, this is this. And this is what I always say to people when they go, Oh my God, somebody's copying me. I'm like mm. Look, they can cop. I get that all the time, but eh. no one can be you. Well, and you know luck. what? Maybe they'll take some of your customers, but that's okay because they weren't really your customers. If they align with that person more than they align with you. Right. Not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to want to buy your stuff. That's, that's so important and so hard for business owners, you know, especially when they're in that initial growth phase yep. to keep in mind because it's like everybody's a potential sale, you know, it's yep. like, no, 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 I, I'm a 1% guy personally, you know, if 1% of the people follow my little Pied Piper shtick, you know, 
I, I'm, I'm happy because I don't need the other 99%. And I've got a chance, you know, no matter how specific your niche is what in retail or anything else, it's the same thing. You know, okay. I mean, I've got the really good, I've got a really good analogy next time somebody says that to you now. It just occurred okay. to me. Okay. So e-commerce sales, you're looking at around two to three percent conversion rate. Okay. So mm. instead of the one percent, you can quite statistically say, I'll just take the two to three percent because stats show that out of a hundred people who know about you, only two to three of them are going to want your stuff. Right. Yeah. That's, that's my little, that's my little. That's that's perfect. Yeah, why why dilute the the message and the mission to to placate the ninety seven or ninety eight percent who aren't going to buy anyway? Yeah, they weren't going to buy anyway. Yeah. So, all right. Now, in terms of sales, and maybe let's talk about capturing lost opportunities and lost sales. How do you think we can use copy branding to to snag those customers to get them to come back again? Or to tip them over the fence when they were thinking, I might buy it from you, I might buy it from that other person because it's five dollars cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, I still love to use email immersions here. Or, I'm sorry, email uh, nurture sequences. Uh, it, it, those are so great, you know, especially if there's no real hard selling throughout the process. It's taking seven emails or nine emails and just really walking them through, you know, again that whole story and driving home the benefits of, of, of hanging around really, uh, but not being pushy and not selling. And that is a, that's a trust builder. You know, it, it takes a little while for them to get through that sequence. Uh, but you know, if you're giving them, I love giving them free gifts along the way, or, you know, even tips or uh, short videos. Uh, who was it? Uh, Fabian Frender, Fabian Fredrickson used to do some fantastic uh, email sequences where she would just do like a minute or two minute video every day and just a certain tip and then just to be able to keep providing that value. And she built trust very easily that way just because she was giving before she asked. Yeah. I love tips in like a re-engagement or an abandoned cart sequence because nobody else is doing that. Right. Everyone else just has the, hey, we've got your stuff and, <laughs> yeah. you, you know, we can't guarantee it will still be here tomorrow. Well, that's great. But mm -hmm. how about, here's one tip to, you know, we're talking about fashion because fashion is where it's used the most. You know, here's right. one tip to declutter your wardrobe in five minutes. I'm going to read that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's cool. So, uh, and you can do that. I'm not as, as been as active in doing that on social media, but I've seen some other people have some good success with that. And, and when I get my head above water these days, I plan on digging into to a little more of that nurture sequence type stuff on social media as well. So what would be the one thing that you would, like when you meet somebody, you just feel like you want to shake them and say, if you just did this, like your whole business would turn around. Mm-hmm. Get out of your own way. Uh, I see so many people that come to me with copy that is all me, me, me focused. Uh, you know, it, it's just, in fact, uh, you know, did I, did I already tell you the LinkedIn story? Okay. No, I'm, I've done like three podcasts today, so I apologize. I love I, stories. Yeah. Tell us the story. Yeah, okay. No, so, uh, so you know, you get those, those templated LinkedIn messages, right? Uh, yep. You know, they call, they pitch, and you can tell they're just cut and paste. Uh, well, so this one, usually I just delete them. This one, I was just, it gave me a headache because the first line of it in all capital letters with six exclamation points after it was, we are experts. And I'm like, oh, I've been waiting for experts. Thank you so much. I don't know what you have, but uh, let me take my, you know, yeah. no. And I don't know what they were selling because I deleted it, blocked the guy, get out of here. You know, and you can't do that anymore. You know, the, no. the, uh, you know, we know everything and, and you know nothing and let us come in and save you, save the day with our shiny cape and our shiny spandex tights. No one wants to feel like they're an idiot, do they? No. Like you want no. to know that you gave it a good try, but there's better out there. But you're okay. Yeah. But no matter what niche you're in, there are too many other options for you to be treating your customers like a credit card number. Mm. That's it just doesn't work anymore. People are wanting connection these days. And that's, that's what I teach my clients how to do is build connection and trust and let that turn into sales. But you can't do it until you work out 
why you're really doing this in the first place. Right. That's why I say, you know, you find yeah. your story, your customer's story, and then you find the intersection between the two. Yeah. And it's so just to recap, you think that the best place to go and find the customer's story, if let's talk about if we're purely online, because if you're in store, it's obviously a lot easier because you're having conversations with people. But if you are mm. purely online, you were suggesting things like going into Facebook groups, going into forums. I actually quite often say, go and find your five best customers and look at them on social media. Like that you, you know, they yeah, may exactly. have their profiles blocked, but you can still see some stuff about them. Right. So you might see that they've got some exactly. kids, you can see some photos, you can start to build a profile and yep. then you can start to, Oh wow. They like this. I like that. There's a connection point. Yep, exactly. That's a, that's a good point. Uh, I, I also like posting like, uh, what was the, you know, going into a group and just posting something like, you know, what was the book that made the biggest impact on you for in the last month or something like that? Yeah. And then, you know, can you start seeing patterns of people talking about the same book and you go, Oh, maybe I ought to pick that up. You know, it, it, it seems like a waste of time to read a book just because your customers are reading it, but it gives you key insights as to what's going on in their world. Yeah. TV is and good for that. Yeah. What's asking that? them what they're watching. TV, what's asking them what TV? they're watching. Okay. So, you know, what's your latest bin Netflix binge and things like right, that. Okay. Yeah. And I, it Absolutely. generally, it generally is the same things over and over again. And just because they like Downton Abbey doesn't mean they're all about <laughs> drama, but right, right. it can give you an idea of the fact that if they all like this thing, what is a connection that you can put together? You got it. Yep. Yeah. It's the, again, that's the one of the, the eight facets connection, which is the tertiary connections, things that have actually nothing to do with your product or very little, but the, but then you could say, you know, Hey, did you catch the last episode of whatever? Yeah. And you throw that in an email and they're like, you huh. know me better than I know myself. Funny that. Hey, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we have been talking for a while. So Let's just go with one, one tip, one thing that people can do today that would potentially make them more money or get them to pull a customer back that was maybe on the verge of going somewhere else. Revamp your about me page. Oh, that's a hard make one. It about them. Everything you say about you has to relate to them and put a call to action at the end of it for crying out loud. So many people miss that opportunity. It's just, you know, you've got this nice about me page where we tell like build the story and you make these connections and then you don't tell them to do anything. Mm -hmm. Book a call, go buy something, get on my yeah. list, go, go to my Facebook group, just do something Yeah. and send your people there from your social media from your email, from wherever it is that you're staying in touch with them. And if you're not staying in touch with them, shame on you because I used to not do that and I about lost my business once. Uh, yeah. So, you know. Another sure story for another episode. Yes, another one. The yes. About Me page is really, really hard. I have to say, I can write a really good About Me page for anybody else. But when mm. it comes to your own, oh my God, I've oh. actually just handed it over to my copywriter and said, okay. here's a whole bunch of stuff that I think we should talk about. And here's a whole bunch of stuff that our customers like. And here's what I think the connection points are. Can you please rewrite it? Because right. when you're talking about yourself, you feel like you've got a, you know, you feel like you have to, you know, you've got a big head. You're trying to, you're trying to talk about all of the great things that you've done and not boast about it at the same time and make it relate to them. But you've got to have the social proof as well, because if you don't have the social proof about how fantastic you are, people, you know, they, you, Somebody else is doing that when you shouldn't be. So I think the about right. me page is really difficult. So mm -hmm. good call. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's usually the first place I start, you know, because, you know, I, I, I can tell you real quick. Do I have a couple minutes? You have a couple minutes. Yep. Okay. I'll tell you a really, really quick story. If this lady ever catches up with me, she's probably going to show up at my house with three guys named Vito. I don't know. But uh, so she was a coach in kind of that metaphysical space. Mm -hmm. And we were doing an about me page and we got it, I got it done and I gave it to her and she called me up just fuming. And I was just like, what is the problem? She's like, this doesn't represent me at all. I'm like, okay, look, let's, let's, let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. Yeah. I'm like, I, can you give me an example? And she said, you didn't tell them my favorite color is blue. And I went, because uh, they don't care. <laughs> How is that germane to whether or not they hire you as a coach? 
Yeah. What's well, important to me? I'm like, well, okay, yeah, okay, but you know, the 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 type of coffee I drink is important to me, but nobody else cares. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so so really making it about them uh, and, and making it relevant. Yeah. I mean, you could use the coffee thing if you know that your people are coffee snobs. You could put that in there, right? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. But if you don't know for a fact that they're coffee snobs, then maybe just let it go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Leave Is that for wrong? another time. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Now, did I hear correctly that you may have a download for us to go and grab? Absolutely. I will send the link over to you over the show after the show, and if, you, if that's okay, we can put that yeah. in uh, below the thing. Okay, cool. Cool. Okay. And what will be inside that download? Well, you're going to have uh, the first chapter of my avatar immersion method book. Awesome. I think a lot of people are sitting here going, I kind of get the concept, Mm -hmm. but I need a little bit more. I need to dig a little bit deeper. So I think that little tidbit will be enough to get people started. And hopefully if they're interested, they can grab your book and read more about it. Speaking of which, if they want to know more about you and maybe work with you, where can they find you? Very easy. LeeRolly.com. There you go. Um, And that's, yep. We'll put a link to that into the show notes and also into your download. Thanks so much for sharing this. I think that so many people get stuck with how to connect what they do with what the customer wants. And I think you've given us some really great tips on how we can join those two things together, use it to build those connections, to build our own brands and to make money in the process. So thank you so much. Very cool. Thank you for having me on. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Bringing Business to Retail podcast. You can find all of the show notes over at selenanight.com. If you found something that you heard today particularly useful, I'd love it if you could leave me a review on iTunes or Stitcher. And of course, feel free to share this episode with someone that you think could benefit by listening to it. Want more retail biz strategies? You can watch the Bringing Business to Retail TV show where each week I'll answer a question or provide you with a simple, actionable retail biz strategy that you can implement in your business right away. If you have a question or a guest, I'd love to hear from you. Drop my team an email at podcast at and I'll see you on the next episode. Have a great week.